Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Megan McNamara and you are at the right place at the right time. I'm so excited to have you here and welcome to all our new subscribers. The family is growing and it's so exciting to see um, the engagement I'm having uh, with these videos. It is amazing. Thank you so much for the support. Continue to watch, like, share. Uh, these videos so that others can learn and benefit from these videos. So today we're going to be discussing some aspects of medical aid that um, I think some of you might know and some might not know and some might feel that medical aids are a scam. Uh, or why do they impose waiting periods and condition specific uh, waiting periods? Why are there exclusions? So today we're going to tap into those so that you're aware when you do join a medical aid that some of these exclusions might be applicable to you and just understand that it is within um, the law and it is within the medical schemes act of 1998 right so you can google that if you want to read more on that but basically this act came into place obviously to regulate medical aids and to make sure that people are not abusing medical aids right because imagine a scenario where you have enjoyed a life, you know, thankfully, you know, touch wood, nothing happened to you during your time and you didn't really need a medical aid. But now that you're getting older, you're getting more sickly and you feel that, you know what, you don't have the funds to, you know, pay for a stay in hospital. So now you, you're considering medical aid and it's not fair on the medical aid scheme and on the members that are on that specific medical aid when a sickly person or when someone who's never had medical aid decides to join medical aid in their later stage of life so it's conditions um like that that then you know medical aids had to then step back and assess to say no man we need to put some certain systems in place conditions in place so that we are not exploited as medical aid and also to make sure that the reserves of the medical aid are not depleted as fast as they would be so there are certain conditions um, that are applicable to you know to medical aids when you're joining a medical aid but before we get to that i just want to break down two types of medical aids so I know I did describe all the um, plans are on the medical aids, but I wanted to I just want to explain a type of medical aid that you might get, because some of these conditions um, and waiting periods might not be applicable if you're on a closed scheme. So you have something that's called a closed scheme, which is part of your you know profession or employer group where external people like lay people like us people in the public cannot join those schemes so just to give you two examples or three examples um, there's a medical aid through the breweries so if you're working for sab they have their own medical aid and only the members and the families are allowed to be on that medical aid if you work for government uh, then you are on the um, what's the government medical aid called again the um, gems so you're on gems that's the, the government uh, medical aid. It's only for government employees. So people like me, I do not work for government. I cannot join that medical aid. Then you have medical aid through PPS, which is just for professionals. So if you have a degree and if you are a professional and you are practicing in your profession, doctors, psychologists, lawyers, etc., you need to have a four year degree. There's a specific criteria for you to become part of PPS. Um, if you don't have a degree and if you're not a professional working within that industry then you cannot be in that medical aid and then you get another medical aid uh, like CAMF that is for um, CAs and accounting professionals so they then belong to that uh, medical aid but it just depends on which company you you work for and those are, would be regarded as closed schemes and the benefits of being in a closed scheme is that certain um, waiting periods and specific condition waiting periods might not be even applicable to you because you are part of the employer group and you have that protection and the employer group at that benefit then you have an open scheme where you know i'm on an open scheme discovery is you know part of you know the open schemes any other medical aid is basically that just means any person from the public can join that medical aid you do not have to be a profession you don't have to have a degree you can um 
join that medical aid as long as you can afford it and meet the criteria and these conditions or these waiting periods will be applicable mostly to open scheme medical aids all right because they don't have that umbrella protection under the group or under the employer group okay okay so we're going to look at uh, waiting periods all right why are, what are waiting periods and why would they be imposed on a medical aid right so a waiting period is usually a um, it's a general waiting period of three months for someone who's never been on a medical aid. So during this time, you are paying premiums, but you are not enjoying the benefits of the medical aid. All right. And the reasons medical aids do this is to protect themselves and also to grow the reserves. Because remember, if you're on a plan that has a savings portion, let's say you're paying 5,000 Rand, 25% of that will go into your savings portion and the balance will go into the pool or into the we can say the, um, the pot that, that houses all the money for your risk benefits. So this is your in-hospital benefits, etc. So let's say you join a medical aid and in the first month, you know, you have an elective procedure that you want to do. You want to do a hip operation and whatnot. And that is costly. But you haven't built reserves to allow you to actually go and um, for the medical aid to actually pay for that procedure. So what happens is, is that they put you on a three month general waiting period so that it builds up some reserves so that you can have access to, you know, do any elective procedure that you want. It is unfair that you join the medical aid and then immediately you want to claim for, you know, costly procedures. At the end of the day, the medical aid will be bankrupt and there wouldn't be enough funds to fund the um, all the members who are on the medical aid. Remember, medical aids are not a profit. Medical aids are a non-profit organization, so they are not there to, you know, create a profit out of you. They pull the money together so that it would assist the members on the medical aid. All right. So it's it's more like a it's like think of it as a stock fail that we're all paying money in so that when we do need to claim there is money for us to claim. All right. And also 25% of your premium goes. It's for, allocated for you for any day-to-day um, -day benefits that you might need, also depending on the plan that you're on. So that's your general waiting period. Then you get your condition-specific um, period up to 12 months. So depending on what, so if you join a medical aid, right, you'll complete a medical aid application form. And if you have any pre-existing conditions, then there is a 12-month waiting period which you cannot claim for that uh, that specific condition also to protect the medical aid because you might be sickly and you might be going in with already an established you know um, condition um, and that is not fair again on the medical aid they would need to you need to wait out that uh, you know period 12 months so let's say you've previously had a knee op what are the chances that you might need another one so for 12 months they'll exclude you for knee operations or there'll be a waiting period on that um, and also, let's say you join the medical aid and you're already pregnant. There'll be an exclusion on your pregnancy because you have joined medical aid in a condition that will require greater funding. So you always need to make sure that you take out medical aid before um, any drastic life changes occur in your life. All right. So there are a few scenarios that I want to take us through with regards to this. Let's say scenario one. So scenario one, you've never been um, a beneficiary of a medical scheme for a period of more than 90 days preceding the application. So let's say 90 days have lapsed, three months have lapsed, and you've never been part of a medical aid. Then um, these uh, following uh, you know, conditions will apply. You'll get a three month general waiting period where you will pay and not benefit from the medical aid. And then you'll have a condition specific um, period up, up to 12 months. And you'll also have a waiting period on any PMBs, which is your prescribing, prescribed minimum benefits. You will have waiting conditions, waiting periods on that. Then scenario two, let's say um, you've had medical aid for less than 24 months, okay, from your previous cover and you you decided to uh, change medical aids and you've applied for medical aid but within 90 days of terminating your previous medical aid scheme the following will apply so here 
you will have a condition specific waiting period let's say you had a condition specific waiting period on your previous medical aid and you were on that medical aid for five months and then now you move on to a new medical aid within 90 days you will continue the condition specific um, waiting period but they will remove five months so you won't start a fresh 12 months for that waiting period so it will be 12 minus 5 and then you'll carry on with your seven months on the new plan all right so let's say you had a waiting period for knee operation back operation and you've changed medical aids they'll only give you a condition specific waiting period for the remainder um, of the 12 months you don't have to start from scratch um, and then you will have if you have a new condition in the, on the new medical aid based on how you completed the form they'll impose 12 month waiting period on your new condition right so then let's say scenario three you've been um, on a medical aid within the last 90 days um, or you've been a beneficiary on a medical aid within the last 90 days um, as well as uh, for more than 24 months so you've been on a medical aid for more than two years and within the 90 days you've changed medical aids and you've applied for um, for another medical aid what they can only um, impose there is just a three-month waiting period all right then we look at late joiner penalties what is a late joiner penalty basically it's a pen uh, the medical aids penalizing older um older members who have never been on a medical aid um, from the age of 35 all right so 35 and older if you've never been on a medical aid then there's a formula that they use where they will then penalize you for not being on a medical aid so every five years it works on a sliding scale you get certain percentages where they will then add that percentage on to your um, risk portion of the medical aid so let's say your medical aid premium is 5,000 Rand and 25% uh, of that goes to your um, goes to your savings portion the 75% of whatever's left they increase the premium on that portion not on your entire premium so it's only on your risk portion where will you where you'll get this penalty imposed so basically um, the penalty band is one to four years so after the age of 35 if you haven't been on medical aid between one to four years they will charge five percent on top of your risk portion if you haven't been on medical aid between five to 14 years then 25 percent will be applied then between 15 and 24 years 50 percent will be applied and 25 years plus that you've never been on medical aid after the age of 35 so just imagine you're joining a medical aid at, in your 70s for the first time they will then put a 75 percent penalty on your risk portion and that will be your new premium so it becomes really expensive if you've never been part of a medical aid this will also be applicable to your dependents so if you have people um, on your medical aid your dependents that have never been on medical aid but you want to put let's say your mom on a medical aid and she hasn't never been on a medical aid and she's in the 60s best be sure that the late joiner penalty will be applicable to her um, premium and her portion and she will definitely pay let's say the the medical aid scheme and the plan you it's a thousand five hundred rand contribution for your mom because she hasn't been on medical aid and after the calculation they will add a penalty on there they will increase their premium and at the end of the day she pays two thousand rand on the same plan that's how your late joiner penalty works and remember medical aids impose these to um, protect themselves so that the resources or the pot the reserves in the pot are not depleted as quickly as they would have if um, anybody just joins whether they've been on a, on a medical aid or not it would also be unfair to the members who are on medical aid but who don't claim as often so it's a balancing act when it comes to medical this was short and sweet. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned. Please like, subscribe and share this information. If you have any questions or any meaningful input, please description below, type in your comment and let's have uh, an engagement. I'd love to chat to you. And if you have any questions, please pop me an email or put it in the description below and I'll be ready to answer any questions. Thank you for joining me and I hope that you'll have a blessed week ahead. Till the next one. Goodbye.